Right, I think we're live, my friend. I think we're live. You have to tell me. I can't hear the music very well. You can't hear the music? It's a little bit quiet, mate. Well, it doesn't cost you money to put it up a bit. It's not even six in the morning here, mate. You know, I've got to like get into it. Six in the morning is where you need, you need music. At eight at night, mate, is where I, I'm playing ambient music. Well, that's what happens when literally 30 seconds before, oh, I got the music, I got the music. All right, so you're going to play the music, Gav, yeah? Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay, what are you talking about? Why are you making things up now? Oh, come on. Come on, mate. Hey, you're, you're better than this, mate. I thought you had integrity. You can lie to me, but you can't <laughs> lie to the pit gods. The pit gods are watching down on you, my friend. I tell you, if, I, if I have a bad day this tomorrow, <laughs> oh, it could cost me a few thousand pounds. I think we are live, by the way. I think we're live. We're getting no, some no, comments. No. Enam, hello. That hello are, you, my yeah, guys, um, I can see Holly and um um, make sure that you give your permission, as we always tell you to, so that we can see your names. That will be automatic. Awesome. So, how's the music going for you guys on the shows? Can you hear the music, or do I need to turn it up? I can hear it, man. It's good stuff. Hi, we are definitely loud. You is loud. Oh, I've still got sleeping lines this week. That was it. That's the music. Two minute intro, mate. That's very extravagant for a live show. Very extravagant. But as always, it seems weird when we uh when we cut to no music. So guys, Andy and I were um were saying like how appropriate this song is. Just every week it's just another layer of appropriateness and why we love it for this show. It's like we're not advocating crime. You do what is in front of you, whatever you need to do, but what we are advocating is that this is a legal way to literally rob a bank, right, mate? This is what we were talking about. Well, I, I, I'll be honest. I didn't know what it meant because it's Spanish, right? I can't remember the exact Spanish words. But apparently it means the house of paper, which I said to you and I thought, wow, that's pretty relevant. <laughs> so, yeah, it is like legally stealing money. I mean, it can't be as fun as illegally stealing money because that no, must be. I, I must say, I'm sure it must be more fun doing uh, the money heist. <laughs> By the way, if you guys have not seen the money, I, I'm not a big uh, Netflix watcher or anything like that. I'm not like a binge watcher. I like to watch the odd program and I was recommended money heist. And I got absolutely hooked. I loved it. So if you haven't watched it, it's a must watch. Um, yeah, guys, just make sure that you're allowing yourselves to be seen. Uh, your name, guys, just give. Um, there's a little link underneath the um, underneath the video. Uh, some of you guys um, like this person here. Money heist is perfect, but I don't know who you are. It'd be great to know who you are. Um, oh, right. Andy, sorry, I cut you off. We're allowed one cut off this week, right? One interruption each. We'll make it two. Because one's going right, to be. We'll make it two or three because we're both bad at that. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone, and I'm glad you're anonymous. No spoilers on Money Heist. Where, like, literally, I don't watch much TV either. He doesn't watch much TV. We've been in lockdown for like God knows how long, and you only just get into Money Heist. You must be like a Buddhist monk or something. You must have been like all in and out for like three months straight and i thought i was doing good meditation and personal development and i still managed to fit in money heist no spoilers well we said they rob a bank i think that's a bit obvious right but i won't say anymore um no, no. Uh, well they're recording the fifth and final season that's the only thing that i've heard well they say that but when's that actually going to happen well like, 2021 apparently how was how is it going to happen that's my question well, yeah who knows if it's going to happen. This is a very good point, Gareth. Where's the sunny window? Very good point. It's actually cloudy and overcast, so there's a bit more light this way. I was actually going to go outside. I'm going to start venturing outside. Um, yeah, and just do it on different locations. Right. So that will be coming. 
Um, but not. Yeah, who, who wants Gavin to do this show on the beach? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might not quite have the budget for that yet, but yeah, we can we can no, work it out. Your budget? You just walk to the beach, mate. It's the tightest rich guy I know. The tightest rich what, guy. What I know. budget do you need? There's a beach. You use your legs and you get there. <laughs> I don't. I, what so, budget do we need? I don't know. What you're one of your uncle's bottles of wine for a start, even though I don't drink at the moment. Oh, well, be- yeah, well, it's not a problem to give you some alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what we're talking about, if it's just a way to get back into drinking, mate, you just need to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Valid point, my friend. Valid point. <laughs> so, look, guys, in case you're new here, we're broadcasting live on YouTube and on Facebook. Thank you very much for tuning in. You guys helped to make it the show that it is. Uh, we love you, each and every one of you, for tuning in. Um, but if you are new, this show is called Pit Black and Pro. Uh, it's the show designed to help you uh, legally rob a bank, basically. I can say the nice strap line, but that's pretty much what it is, right? Legally rob a bank. No guns, no criminal activity, unless you want to do it outside of this show hours. But yeah, no, seriously, Pip's like a pro. The show that's been designed to help you take your trading to the next level, one pip at a time, all thanks to our resident in-house trading professional, not me. I just pick his brains and just have a bit of banter with him. But Mr. Andy Demi, how are you this week, my friend? I'm actually really good. Um, As I've said to you transparently, I'm quite tired. It was a bit crazy, a bit of a crazy weekend. Uh, we've had so many new students join us. Um, so just been trying to w- welcome people and, you know, get them int- get them relaxed and in the mood for learning how to trade FX. But no, on a personal level, I'm doing really good, mate. Thanks for asking. Um, yeah. and, and I'm very, very excited because the gym is reopened and I will be going to the gym first thing tomorrow morning. So... <laughs> That in, is in, in great news. Oh, I didn't cut you off then. I'm good. I'm good. I'm still, I've still, I've still got one left. So in case you're new and you haven't seen this, this is pre-Rona. This is pre-Rona Demi body. Actually, let's get a bigger one in there. There we go. Look at that. Zeus in the house. Mate, I've got some weights here, mate. I can still lift them. <laughs> that boy was like before lockdown. You don't want to see him now, seriously. So he's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders. Bless him. I do. Shoulders are looking broad still, mate. You're looking broad. It's good. That's good. That's good to hear. <laughs> so, guys, how how are you all this week? Thank you for keeping the comments flowing in. Uh, Dan, Tyler, in the house. Holly. Dan, it's great to have you here, mate. Is he? Is this first time he's here with us? Uh, I don't know if that's a drink or if he's referring to uh, swimming attire, but yeah, not it's happen on I think it that's is. a great idea. Not gonna happen, my friend. Holly's got the right story again. One pip at a time. No, when I when I find you with a hundred k, you got a bikini to make your first trade. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, right? I don't want to see if that. If, yeah, all if, I if, if, it, look, if the people want that, mate, we have to go with it. Nah, let's not go down that road. <laughs> let's not go down that road. Um, if all I have to do though to get my uh, happy, come on, yeah. mate, tell him. <laughs> <laughs> seriously if all i have to do to get that funded account is wear a freaking mankini or a bikini on the beach if that's it that's easy for me that doesn't that doesn't matter to me oh, trying, yeah. to learn, trying to learn how to do this bloody freaking trading game i love the analysis but one thing i want to pick your brains on straight away is uh trade management mate like i go to bed and i'm blue and then i seem to wake up and the screen's red and it's just like it's really good for my mentality to kind of just meditate and release from it. But it's just like, it's definitely something that I'm on my process. Um, if you are new, <coughs> I'm not a professional trader yet. Far from it, but I'm on a pretty fast track. And obviously I'm getting to learn from this man. Which way? <coughs> this way. This man. I'm getting to learn from you. So can you talk a bit more about, for especially the guys like me that are still quite new to this, trade management and how how to kind of navigate around that especially at the beginning yeah i mean first thing is is um when you took the trade 
what's your what's your expectancy on the trade so it's always good to think about like you know what's the journey that you expect the trade to kind of go down like you have to really almost visualize what it should be doing um so like what trade was it out of interest what currency don't need specific uh, you won't get specifics mate it's too early um it was the aussie uh, aussie us dollar so the one that the trade that i set up last week i let i let it run just to see what was going to happen and i got filled and a few other guys in um in one of the groups was saying about it as well um i won't mention any names unless you want me to mention names but um you guys know who you are we were looking at it and i was just like yep yeah, i'm gonna get filled let's see what happens on it um and i also from the master class you did on monday just by the way to give a bit of context i was really inspired this guy says i don't trade gold um and then he literally shows some levels and it shoots up massively and i was like god damn this guy's got some skills so i started looking at gold as well and i found another previous 200 hidden Fibonacci level. And I've got a really good breakdown on it. And not overnight on that, I was up massively, probably about 3%, maybe more. And then only only because I looked on uh, my MT4 before I came on now, and then and now I'm pretty much scratch on gold again. So yeah, it's just really that trade management. If we don't have time, if we're like, like I was asleep, someone else might be at work, someone else might be looking after the kids. So I just think it's a really interesting thing for all of us that are at that stage where we're up. It didn't hit. It didn't hit my uh, take profit, but would I have taken it if I was um, if I was awake? And just if you can kind of open up on that, that I think that would be a lot of value for. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, the the thing is, it depends on the type of trade that you're going to take. So, you know, firstly, I, one thing I will say is. Um, with overnight trades you have to feel you have to be comfortable that that can happen you've got no way of managing that situation whilst you're asleep so you know and i i've kind of done both i've done it in the past where um i would leave trades overnight that are new trades so therefore they're at risk so it's very 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 there's a differentiation between new trades that are being entered just before or not too much distance before you're going to bed and then trades that have been running and you have a long-term view on them. So those are different because the numbers that we're talking about, like let's say when we talk about a long-term trade, your, your stop is generally going to be a bit further away. So blue or green, you already have that mental expectancy that this market is going to move around. Uh, profit, loss, profit, loss, and then hopefully profit more often than loss. Um, but you, and I, that's why I asked you, what's your expectancy? So when you take a trade, I almost think about how this could go to its target or to its stop. I think about both options. And I think, um, okay, well, it may, for example, let's, let's talk about um, an example scenario. So we take a trade, a trend trade, and we think, OK, well, it's going to probably go to a C to D and we predict where the C is going to be. But we may get it wrong. Right. We could maybe be getting it on a, an inner trend line. But then the market breaks that inner trend line and goes a little bit lower and then starts to go up. So then we go into maybe a little immediate profit because it bounces off that level and then it pushes back down and then it goes back up. Now, if you've thought about that, Gav, and you've already kind of pictured that that's what could happen it won't bother you it won't bother you because you've already accounted for it do you know like where we get most upset unexpected losses so like yeah. if you get a bill a fine right nobody likes a fine <laughs> especially from a traffic warden those guys yeah, exactly you're yeah, like you literally have got to be just waiting around. I got one the other day and it really did get on my nerves. Um, and normally I can test them, but I couldn't be even be bothered. Even though I, was, I, I knew I, I, I probably wouldn't, I couldn't even be bothered to have that negative energy. So I just paid it. But but the, the point is, is that every, it doesn't matter. And, and by the way, the amount it doesn't really matter to me. Like 55 quid, I paid it. It's not the end of the world. But the point is, is that it's a negative it's a negative feeling it's an unexpected cost and it's the same thing with trading when you don't expect it 
when you're not thinking about okay how is this trade likely to go because it's this type of trade it's a lot harder to accept so if you want to take an overnight trade there's you you have to firstly fully fully take on board that this could lose that's that's important to think about and actually don't expect it but think about the feeling of it before it happens so i would go to bed and i would think okay i have taken a good trade i'm going to put what i think is a reasonable target that i can achieve quite easily without a big move so that what's the next level up what's the next easiest target but then i'll say okay on this trade what am i willing to wake up to and if you're not willing to wake up to that then don't take the trade so like for me like if I, okay that trade might cost me five grand do i want to wake up look at my phone and be five grand down for the day before i've even woken up probably not so i don't take the trade so i've evolved that because I don't really, I like, like my mental state has to be just so, so that I can perform at the highest level. I don't really want to wake up to that and then have to sort of go and fight to go and get my, my P&L up for the day. So in general, my rule, which I, is now, I don't like to hold things overnight. So I'll be rambling on, mate. So, you know, you, you ask me some more questions. No, it's good. It I mean, look, sense. Hopefully you got value from that, guys, because look, I'm on my journey as much as we're we're all on our own individual journeys. Um, and we've got access to this guy live, so we may as well make the most of it. So yeah, we'll have a bit of banter as well. But I just I feel <laughs> like we, I know I was gonna say that. I was just about to say 60 pound fine. What? Eric got AFC. AFC. What did you do, mate? Did you steal their chicken? <laughs> Mate, what did you lick if it wasn't Colonel Sanders' finger? That's what I'm doing. Oh, <laughs> Actually, don't tell me. He's Gareth's one of the guys that's trying to get me in a pair of speedos on the beach. I have no idea why. I've never so, heard yeah. of that one, mate. That is a, that's an unusual one. He probably asked the he probably asked the girl on the till to put on a bikini or something. Maybe, yeah. No Gareth's track record. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, it's it, maybe it's he asked for a Big Mac. Probably, I mean, look, we all want to get we all want to get this down, and we can see the potential. And I guess for me, it's just yeah, you see the potential, and it's just yeah, you miss your you miss your take profit by a couple of pips. You miss your your entry by a couple of pips. It's so different how it could work. No, that, that's a that's that's a good question actually. Um, no. I don't think that's a smart idea either because then you're like for me i will take a trade that i've got the expect like if i take a trade i will have to manage it correctly not based on my emotions so sorry we're trying to be serious and i'm just having banter sorry yeah no no that's cool uh, no it's a, it's a good question aaron so like you know you have to manage the trades so either you enter the trade and you fully accept um, how you're going to manage it, and you're going to. And, and if that means holding overnight, um, if it's a good probability trade, you just leave it. But you have to then be able to accept the risk on the table. So the best way to kind of think about it is if it goes wrong. Um, if it goes wrong, am I okay with it? The next day and like, am i going to be able to just sort of push on and say that's that's minor it's, it's just done so one of the things that you could do is let's say you normally risk a percent mm -hmm. and you take a trade halfway through your day you think it's going to go into profit and it's going to give you some room maybe you could tighten your stop up if it makes sense according to your plan but it doesn't do anything it's just where you got in now you're thinking okay do i want to stay in this trade or not if you still like the trade cut your position down if you're not comfortable with the risk. So that's probably what I would do. I'd cut it down to half or a quarter where I'd say, I'm okay with that. So if it goes, I prefer to make less, um, but get good rest and, and, I'm, and I pre prefer to lose more if it goes wrong. Sorry, to lose less again, but what I'm comfortable with so that I can start my day 
on a positive. So if I, if I, let's say for example, I typically risk five grand on a trade, I might be comfortable with a, a grand overnight to give you an idea. So, so and whatever that is for each individual. So if you normally risk a hundred pounds on a trade, you might say, look, I'm okay to lose 20 quid and then start my day like that. And I, I can recover that. So don't risk it if you're not willing to lose it. I, and that's really great, really great advice. So thank you for that. Hopefully, um, if that's giving you value, by the way, if you are new algorithm squad, we need you just bang in a yes. Plonker seems to be my favorite second word to say whenever I'm thinking or on this show. So type in plonker. Just give us some interaction, guys, because it helps boost our juice in the Facebook live algorithm. So if you are getting some value from that, just bang in a yes, please. That'll be most appreciated. That is our currency of payment. And more importantly, our currency of love. We feel the love from the yeses, all the noes, just general engagement. So going back to that point, it's really interesting. I think for me, yeah, see, look, for me, I think the frustration's been, and I didn't anticipate feeling like this. I, I like you say, it's that risk. I know the risk of what I could lose, and that makes sense. But for me, to see that I was, I, I worked it out correctly and it went the way that I did, but I missed it by five pips, 10 pips. I missed my take profit. That's the bit that kind of really gets me and just goes douche, douche, douche a couple of times in the rib cage because it's like, if I was awake, would I have managed that differently? Could I have seen it differently? And I guess there's no way of working out that bit, is there? Where if you've done no, your right. analysis right, you pick the level, you pick the change in the market direction, great. That's the win for me. I've taken that win, but then it's like it didn't actually materialize because I couldn't manage the trade because I, I missed my take profit by a few pips. That's the well, bit. Do you know what? But it's, really, it's a really simple solution, like make a rule for overnight trades. Like go for less. Mm. Go for less on overnight trades. Like if you think, because I normally go for more when I'm awake because I set alerts at each point to getting closer to my target. So when I know I'm three quarters to my target, I'll generally go to my screen within the sort of next sort of half an hour, I'll go to my screen because I'm trying to maximize what I get from this trade. Um, whereas if I was taking a trade overnight, and sometimes I will take them, I'm not saying I don't take them, I will, because if it's a really good setup, it makes sense, take the trade, but maybe just say, look, there's the target, there's the level, there's the DTR, why don't I go for a little bit less? And if you wake up and you haven't reached that yet, you could increase it back again. You can increase it to your real level, but maybe go 20 pips lower just to make sure you're, you're, that's not happening to you. So you just want to make sure that you have the best possible chance of hitting that target overnight. Good stuff. I think we've covered that, have we? If we haven't, forgive me. What are the risks of trading later at night? Um, yeah, I mean, there's not really many risks apart from like what we're talking about. Yes, spreads can be a bit, little bit higher, but generally speaking, I think it's more emotional risk. Mm. Do, you know, do you know what? That That's the biggest, I think that's the hardest thing. You've got to try and plan this so that you make it as easy emotionally for you to make money. There's no other way of doing this. So like what you would, um, what you would be okay with, somebody else won't be okay with. So that's really important. And, you know, don't worry about missing out on trades. Like you can't trade out of desperation to make pips. Like there's so many opportunities when you're awake or whatever time you're all available you know, even if you're doing a nine to five job, there's plenty of time to get a trade. However, I will say this, if you are busy during the day and you're working, um, and obviously you've got to sleep at night and you've got to take trades, then there's a good chance that you may have to hold something overnight. You know, I think with a lot of people at the moment with lockdown, people are working from home. I know having spoken to a few people, they're kind of working and then looking at their charts. So it's a little bit different at the moment. But in general, 
you know, you'll have to get comfortable with that until obviously you can do this full time yeah. or you can be available full time, I'd say. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's part of the process. Um, Katerina, thank you for your question. Andy, what will make you close the trade earlier? I think that would be a good question to go into as well. Um, in what sense, close it earlier? Do you think? <laughs> Uh, what is a good question. I guess there could be a myriad of reasons, right? So, um, yeah. Oh, wanna... um, yeah. No. Okay. Well, a, a good example is one that I brought up last week, which is if the currency isn't doing what it should be doing, or what I'd expect it to do in that moment, I'll close the trade. So, for example, like last week, if you remember, I took. I posted it in the group, Sterling Oz. It had a few th confluences. I liked the trade when I took it, but it didn't do what I needed it to do. So it was like 4 p.m., end of sessions, um, good level. And what did it do? It, it pushed down and closed up. So it had like a almost like a, a, a bullish formation, basically. Now, considering the confluences that you know I always build, and considering the time of day, that didn't make sense to me. So I had a bigger stop, but shut down. Straight away, scratch. That doesn't, and it doesn't matter what happens after. P pummels down, I'm not gonna sit there thinking about, and by the way, I say this now, I wasn't always like this, but before I'd go to the trade and I'd think, oh, I missed out. I missed out on that profit if it did eventually go down. I've learned not to do that anymore. I don't even look at it. Um, mm. that might, that's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Next one. Like you've got to be business-like. You've got to be, you know, unattached because all I'm trying to do, I'm not trying to be right. I'm trying to make money. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And it's that mentality that you need to have. I guess for 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 some validation, I think is the emotion that comes through for me in the process because obviously you're teaching me some other things. I'm I'm picking them out, which is great. It's just I'm not being able to capitalize on, which is where the frustration is. But I'll take the wins from that. I, I'll, I'll listen back to this show and hear that hear that advice and see if I can uh, see if I can. In, improve on that and obviously implement i think katarina's just come back in sorry guys i can't see all the comments all the time you said you have alerts on the way to your pro top profit target what can make you close the trade when you're already in profit but didn't hit the target yet great question um the in my plan if i'm three quarters to my profit target i can make a judgment call uh, so like and what that looks like is the following time of day so let's say I've I've let's say I've I've caught the move, and it's now coming up to the end of um, the London session. So three four o'clock. That's one reason. Another reason could be, you know, maybe my trade was like a two day trade, but it's just coming up to the DTR for the day, and it makes sense. Look, um, it's almost certainly going to pull back here. I'll take the profit. Um, and the other thing could be like the price action, like we're starting to get a slowdown in price, a little bit, a little spike, and you'd feel you've caught enough. So for me, if you get to the three quarter point, um, that's in the take profit zone. It doesn't need to go right to my target, but if there's enough time and it makes sense and the, the DTR is there, let it do its thing and try and get the maximum you can out of the trade cool yeah different start to the show this week guys but obviously it's um you know we like to mix it up keep you on your toes but i think that's i mean purely selfish reasons that's given me a lot of value and i think judging by the comments it's definitely triggered something in other people remember we're here to help you improve your trading one pip at a time and i definitely think that that's going to help i know it's going to help me one to at least get out another pip from the markets or close the trade one pip early. Um, so yeah, hopefully you're getting some value from that as well, guys. One thing I wanted to speak to you about, you know, if we don't, if we don't get this right, or we've got to <laughs> get jobs and 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 things like that, it's really interesting. What are you laughing at? Katerina. 
For, for some reason, everyone's calling me the Mr. Jedi. Is that you? Well, remember, <laughs> not in trading. I, I'm humble enough to know that. But I think, remember, we call it Jedi traders. We've been calling ourselves Jedi traders in the making and stuff like that. I think that's spilled over into the groups, <laughs> mainly because of the mindset stuff as well. And, and I think, yeah, you know, if I can share my wins and losses, my ups and downs, um, if it helps someone else, and if a question I've got to ask helps someone else, then I'm happy to do that. So thank you, Mr. Jedi. Or I think he looks more like Yoda, Katarina, but there we go. Um, no, I'm yeah. not actually, uh, I know this may be a, a controversial statement, but I'm not really a Star Wars fan. Okay. You just, I've just deleted you. <laughs> I just deleted you in my mind. Uh. You're, you're lucky that I actually know where uh, Jedi is. That's about what as... What do you mean you know you don't? Clearly don't. Because where Jedi is, Jedi is not a place. I guess it's a place... No, really not, like where it comes from. Okay, fair enough. This was a good one. Good shout. Andy Wan Kenobi. <laughs> he, <laughs> pro he probably won't get that, Laurie Lorian. Oh, well done. Look, look, Holly, thank you it's very much. We'll be best friends, don't worry. Absolutely wasted. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely wasted. That was comedy gold. I'm going back to that one. That was comedy gold. 80% of us would be smirking at that one, going, good on you, mate. That would yeah, good. that's true. 80% 80, 80 of people lose money, mate. So That's very true. That's a very good point. And then Holly, just like my sister, she has no Scooby-Doo about Star Wars. And if you had a brother, they probably made you go to the cinema when you were five, and that's why you hate Star Wars like what happened with my sister. So yeah, fair enough. Hey, do you know what? I want to tell you this because it's quite funny. It made me laugh. So this week I found out in Australia that, um, and I might end up having to do this, mate, if these trades keep going against me. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. But in the outback, people are buying metal detectors, right? And they're going out to the outback. There's a massive gold rush on in Australia right now. People are going to the outback in their droves they're going choo, 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 like with the metal detector, which kind of sounds like a dodgy lightsaber. Um, they're finding loads and loads and loads of gold. Uh, uh, two guys found like a hundred grand of gold this week. Unbelievable. That is, that is crazy. Mate, catch a flight over. We can do pips like a pro whilst we're, uh, whilst we're looking for gold. But it right. got me thinking, it got me thinking that like, I've done some, funny things for money i want to know this will be interesting oh what's, my God. <laughs> what's the most, you know what's coming right what's the most random or worst job that you've ever had i've got i've got a couple and also yeah uh, you, you have to admit one first mate because uh i don't think people are going to look at me the same way mate <laughs> wait you're a part-time stripper aren't you you're a part -time no, stripper. no that I, there's no way mate that, I would rather be homeless than do that. <laughs> really? Yeah. 100%, mate. No way. I have morals. I'd, I'd rather be homeless. <laughs> I um, Yeah, so for me, I think the worst one was, I don't even know, it feels like, like former, former lives rather than past lives, but I remember it was coming up to Christmas and I ended up getting a job at a supermarket warehouse. I don't know. This was like before I was 20. Um, and it was the worst three or four weeks of my life. The guy hated me. I thought I could go in there and just be funny and just be myself. No, no, no. That doesn't always work in a in a warehouse environment. Not. And I know many guys that work in warehouses now um, and they're really cool guys. But just this guy just had an issue. And I thought it was with me. But now knowing what I know, it was with himself. And I had to like jump in the bins and press down all the crap and the rubbish in the big waste bins. And I did it, mate. Like, a, I, I can't believe I did that. And that, that for me was like, there's got, that was when I really had the fire in my belly. Like those few weeks, it was just like, there's got to be a better way for me. There's got to be a better way to get some cash in my pocket. And um, the most random one, the most random one I'll share with you as well. The most random thing I've done for a job or for money that I can think about is I used to work for a, a radio station. So when I was just before I was going to uni in Bournemouth, big shout out to Bournemouth Uni crew, if you're watching. Um, before I was going to uni, I got a job working for a radio station and um, I ended up being working for the morning show. And I ended up doing this thing where I was the nun of fun. 
um, and I would dress up as a nun and the listeners would set me challenges. So every week or every, it ended up being like almost every day or every few days, um, listeners would call up and then I would go to a location and then film back. So I learned how to, I learned how to pole dance with a stripper whilst wearing a nun's outfit. I got to drive a tank whilst wearing a nun's outfit and I got to swim with sharks all whilst wearing a nun's outfit. So that was, that was a pretty cool, fun, random job. But yeah, the worst one was definitely, I can still smell it now, that bin. I can still smell it now talking about it. So time for you to share. It can't be that bad. And also, guys, if you want to share some random jobs that you've done um, or some of the worst jobs that you've done, share it. We'll all share our wins and our losses and our random times. So, Mr. Demi, over to you. Do I, do I have to really admit to this stuff now? You put me on the spot, mate. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for an answer, by the way. He wore speedos for money. And he's not even offering to pay me. No. If I get a funded account, I'll wear speedos. But other than that, not going to happen. Not going to happen, sweetheart. <laughs> You're going to hell. <laughs> Steve Frost. No. Well, I'll, I'll tell you the, the backstory to it. So when I was, um, when I went to uni, um, I basically, my parents were, you know, providing the food for me. Like, <laughs> like, they said to me, look, you're not going to work. You have to study, you know, typical kind of like, um, I don't know, cultural thing. And they didn't want me to work. But obviously they didn't want me to go out either. They just thought I'm going to go there just to study, for th <laughs> you know, for three, four years. Um, so I was there with my cousin, like who we're like really good friends with. And we decided, look, we're gonna, we're basically just gonna work and not gonna tell them. And we're just gonna do any job we could possibly get just to earn money to go out. That's literally what the plan was. So we went to an agency and whatever jobs they could give us, <laughs> this is actually quite funny. Um, well, we're gonna judge that. Have you guys watched, um, what's that film? Step Brothers. Uh, are we playing charades? Is it called Step Brothers or are we doing charades here? What's that film? But the way they, they basically interview together. It sounds crazy what I'm going to tell you, but... <laughs> Is um, that the one where they get the hit? It's really funny. Um, it's Step Brothers. I'm sure it's Step Brothers. Somebody confirm. Oh, okay. where, where they basically, they go to the interviews together. They're like two, like, they're basically like two big kids. Step Brothers? Somebody tell me. Well, you haven't told us enough yet about the movie. How are we well, going to get from that? They had an interview together. Hold on. Oh, I'm looking it up, mate. No, no, I'm, I'm you sure it's, it is Step Brothers. Step Brothers. With Will, Will Farrow's in it, I think. Okay, whilst you take your time trying to remember the story, clearly, someone, Facebook user, you've got to log in on the StreamYard link at the bottom. Yeah, of this. Stop. thanks, Holly. Yeah, Chocolate. Step Brothers. Anyway. Oh, you ready to talk now? Because someone said chocolate factory have to control the temperature. Oh, I thought that was a job that you did. Maybe not. No. Well, yeah. so anyway, so I we literally went to the agency and we said we're only willing to do a job together. That's it. We're not willing to do the job otherwise. So me and my cousin. <laughs> so we got jobs in normal things like a calf. We were cleaning out the tables and this and that. And we got, I work for American Express, um, promoting their credit cards and this and that. And all that, and that was quite good. Um, uh, that's another story for another day because we were a little bit cheeky to get extra commissions, basically. Um, so would you like the, um, would you like me to put on this free membership? No. Okay, no problem. And then I'll just put them on it anyway. <laughs> that was very naughty. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that was, I was a bit naughty there, but. Uh, I needed money for drinks and stuff, and <laughs> the work. This is the I'm leading up to this. Um, this the job. So basically, we landed a job as dinner ladies. Literally <laughs> dinner ladies, <laughs> <laughs> handing out sausage rolls to the kids. <laughs> I can't believe I admitted that in public. <laughs> that is brilliant. 
Yeah. That is, what I did. that is what I did for money, mate. At Ooh. 18. <laughs> I'm just thinking back to it. And I'm not even joking you. We had, we had young girls coming up to us, like literally young girls. It was quite embarrassing, but... <laughs> Wait, so I, I'm just thinking back to my school days when the dinner lady used to wear the hairpiece and the blue outfit. Yeah, Did, you have, to wear all that? Did you have to wear all of that? I, I honestly probably don't remember. I don't actually you remember. Do remember. You <laughs> <laughs> he does. You definitely remember. No, I remember. I remember, I remember little you. girls coming up to us and flirting and thinking, Jesus, this is not. <laughs> And handing, what would you like? Sausage roll with that? A bit of mash? <laughs> okay, this is what I'm visualising. You were, you had to wear the white coat and the white hairnet. Am I close? Uh, no, no. I'm sure. I, I'm sure I didn't have to do that. You said that very matter of factly, which makes me think that you do know. I don't. I don't actually remember. I probably just try to forget. Okay. Okay. Oh, crikey. I've done that as well, Dean. I sold double glazing and I've done door-to-door -door sales and everything. I had so much fun back in the day when I just was doing <laughs> random stuff. It was so funny. Double glazing. That's brilliant. That's to be done, mate. Do you know what? I was willing to do whatever it took, but not stripping, but whatever it took to make some money to go out. Lies. That's the general consensus of the people. Lies. You're lying. Uh -uh. What Guys, lying I'll, I'll get it out of him. I'll get it out of him. Um, Blumenek, so thank you for sharing that. I think I saw someone, and I, I can't keep track of the comments all the time, but someone said they one of their worst jobs, they cleaned out trains. I think it was Sab who said that. So thanks for sharing that, mate. Um, yeah, the, the hairnet was actually blue. Is that what it is? So you're in a white outfit. With a blue hair. Yeah, whatever makes people happy, mate, you can uh, <laughs> visualize whatever you want. Well, look, it's it's gone 22 already. And I know this week you were going to look at hopefully a couple of pairs, right? So uh, we'll start with one. And if we've got time, we'll do another one. So it's already that time, guys. The time just goes so fast during this hour. I really, really enjoy it. So glad we get to spend it with you guys. But it is time for Pips Like a Pro with Mr. Andy Demi. Trade setter of the week, please, sir. Okie dokie. Right. And in case, in case you don't know and you think he's got some weird Rain Man thing where he just looks off to the side, he's got a big TV monitor that he decided to put on the side of the screen because it must be weird for people that don't know you and then you just like, you're talking and then you go. Yeah, that might be a little bit weird. But so he's got I, think, I, think it's, I think the more weird thing is... Uh, that they're learning to train the effects of a former dinner lady. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's. I think that's a bit more. I think that's what they're trying to uh, process right now. <laughs> not. Not. That I'm looking at it now. <laughs> yeah, you really, we shouldn't have really gone from dinner lady story into FX trading setup. Yeah. The week well, you can trust me. <laughs> just not when it comes to american express deals <laughs> exactly yeah yeah oh man you know what I, I will tell you that story a bit more next time the american express one because me and my cousin both got uh, put into the special team of like great um performers and then they realized that we were just uh rigging the game <laughs> boiler room mate boiler room yeah, they kindly asked us to leave after a bit. <laughs> kindly asked you to leave. <laughs> I've, I've had that a few times. Been kindly I, asked. To leave I was eighteen. Leave. Come on, you got you got to cut me some slack. <laughs> hey, um, to be fair, that says that's awesome that you went out to get a job. I um, yeah, I I was going to say a rude word then, but I literally wasted my student loan. We had a we had a just while you're getting that set up, we had a roommate. Um, Ginger Steve, his name was, absolute legend. He would do work, and we used to call him, his name is Steve White, so he's either known by Ginger Steve or Tighty Whitey, because he wouldn't spend money, and we were all just like spending money. Like, <laughs> but Tighty Whitey, he saved that student loan, and he used it to put towards his first property. And now wow, he's, 
investing in properties around Peckham and he's making money and doing the whole rich dad, poor dad thing. Big up Ginger Steve, a.k.a. Tighty Whitey. He's having the last laugh. So, you know what? On, on that note, though, like on a serious level, that's something that people struggle with. Um, you do actually have to enjoy life as well. Um, and that's what we make money for. So sometimes people find that difficult, um, especially people that have struggled for, for years. And then suddenly you see some success and money's coming into you and you think, well, I, I can't enjoy myself. I need to invest only. So you have to find a balance. Yeah. So, yeah. mate, honestly, my uni years were the best ever. Like, so I would never give them up and say, oh, I should have started investing at 18. I'd absolutely do exactly the same thing. Earn money and go and enjoy myself. Just so on that. You have to do both. You have to do both. No, and I, I didn't cut you off then because I thought you finished, honestly, mate. I promise. But I was having lunch with a mate yesterday just before he, he leaves for a month to go to work again. We have a catch up. And he was like, how crazy, how crazy has this year been? But for me personally, when I was telling my story and it was like this, this December, I'm way more optimistic. I'm way more excited about what 2021 is going to bring. Um, I'm way more settled and happy in myself compared to last year. We say what a, what a, what a storm show 2020 has been and it has guys if, if you're still here now still standing i tip my hat to you because amazing you've got through 2020 pretty much but actually i look back at towards the end of last year and it was last december it was worse there was worse outlook i had so much stresses and strains and everything like that and it was just yeah i've gone through 2020 and this december a year on i'm actually so excited and yes there's going to be ups and downs in 2021 but it, I just want to share that with everybody. Share that, you know, it doesn't have to be a financial win, even just the outlook. If there's something, one thing that you're happy about compared to what you were yesterday, one thing that you're happy about compared to what you were this time last year, celebrate it, guys. Just take that moment, take that second to just celebrate it. And um, yeah, that's what I'm doing, sharing that with you. So um, yeah, that was just my little side side note so do you want to jump in or do you want to say something yeah no about? that's true and, and like just like, just on that as well like before i kind of get into the analysis the you know even just talking about financial markets you know the biggest wealth is built in the diversity and you know well, obviously we don't want covid we don't want all this stuff um for people people are sort of like you know suffering but but also like you have to try and think about it in a different way and it brings opportunities. There's a lot of people that I know that I've, are now looking to business and trading and other things. You know, it used to be taught, like, you know, it used to be said that having a safe job, um, safe job was the right thing to do. It's the, it's, the safe, it's the safety net, it's guaranteed. But it's not the case. Actually, what's apparent now is actually what I do is safe, not the standard nine to five and that's what people are aspiring to now and what you guys who are here are aspiring to do that's almost safe because you have complete control um, about what you do whereas you don't have complete control if your boss says to you look i'm sorry we, we haven't got enough money coming in um, you know go find another job so this is the perfect time to master this it really is um whether it's this and i know you know you've done your Amazon business um, and other people in this group have done businesses. Um, but for me, this and you can you can do a combination of things. But trading is one of the very, very few professions that you can say is so liquid. You literally make money today and you take it out and it's in your bank account today. Like when I invest in property, I can't get that money out. Like that's that's like for me to go and sell a property um you know it's a hassle like you know it takes time you need solicitors you need all this other stuff to rent a property out it's hassle you don't know who you're going to rent who's going to rent from you who's going to create damage who's going to have a problem with their you know with their prop you know all these other things so i think it's it's the best thing when you have complete control it's liquid you immediately can get your money out amen to that brother amen to that and just yeah just saying some of the comments that are coming in, you know, we're glad this resonates with you guys. And, you know, 2021 is going to be a big push. We're going to help 
as many people as we can get out of the nine to five mindset, I think is the first thing. And then, you know, if you want to explore other ways to make money, do it, but just do it. Because I think the days of the safety net, staying in a safe job, working your way up, I think those, those days are going to be numbered. We have to find ways of adding value. Your money that you get is going to be in direct proportion to how much value either you give or how much value you can learn. Um, and, and, you know, we'll, money is an energy we've spoken about before, but money is also about learning how much power you can control. And the money that you have is a reflection of how much power you can control, which maybe we can talk about next week because I want to jump into these trades. Yeah, and I, and I think next week would be good, mate. Coming up to Christmas, I'm just saying it so for, for us to remember, like to start talking about goals and planning and things like that as well. I think it's really important time to start doing that setting. And, I, and I'd like to go into that, but obviously um, we haven't got time to do that today. But let's let's make sure we do that before Christmas. Perfect. Um yeah okay there's so much i want to talk about but we need to crack on otherwise we won't get to the to this bit so um like i was saying in the group guys i think obviously i have my comfort zone currencies where i go to to try and get my pips out and i know those very very well but um i know that there's opportunities everywhere and so that's why i've taken on today a pair that probably i haven't traded for over over a year. I don't remember the last time I took an Aussie Swiss trade. Um, so I've gone through the same type of analysis. And what I'm trying to basically figure out is, you know, what is happening here? What is the picture? And what kind of trades could I find? So clearly, this is a really, really nice um, downward uh, channel that's respecting this kind of like Descendancy down, this angle here looks quite nice. And when you kind of zoom into where we are right now, you can kind of see that we are actually on that line. So the first conclusion that I'd make um, is that there could be some potential downside, right? That's that's an easy conclusion. Most people will start to be able to do that. Okay, so that's the easy bit. Now um, what's the other thing that I need to make note of? Well, look, when you see like these double levels, okay, these are using our indicator. When you see double levels, like here, um, this one, and this one, and this one, this is going to be a strong zone. So that's a strong zone that we have to think, well, okay, it's going to take something to really break through. And the fact that you've got this channel line here. So probability that's what we're trading we're not trading certainty okay certainty doesn't exist in trading probability does and if you trade good probability that will almost lead to certainty like almost a certainty in what you're going to potentially earn so as long as you make sure that you are trading high probability and in this case um, there's a couple of things one you could say okay maybe on the downside it's more probable you could argue that case but actually, here's the thing that I want you to really get here. Where this market currently is, look at that. Let's zoom in now. Uh, what is that? That is a range, okay? How do we know it's a range? Well, it basically goes sideways. And another little clue is when you have these spikes and you're not getting full bodies, it means that the market is uncertain. It doesn't know where it wants to go. So it's like spike, it rallies up, spikes down, uh, like here. And this one spikes down, rallies up. So uncertain. Why am I spending so much time on this, right? Because I have to get what is happening in this market for me to be able to go and find relevant trades. So that's why I'm spending a bit of time on this to fully understand it. Okay, so there's a battle going on right now. Yes, overall, possibly, probability is lying to the downside. So that's the conclusion that I needed to make. So then I go over here. Okay, so what have we got over here? Well, we've got some, some downward market uh, channel lines. And I've marked this one here, which is the current one. And here's the thing that I want you to get here. We've got a bullish candle formation. But as we said, the, the possibility is that on the on the weekly time frame that this market is going to push down okay 
So what does that make me think? Okay, again, you see how like I'm not really using anything apart from price and price related um, indicators. Okay, so it makes me believe that actually, yes, we should be going down. However, this bullish candle formation here is telling me maybe, maybe it's going to push up before going down. Right? That could be, that's a reasonable conclusion to make. I'm not talking even anything about trades right now. I'm not even thinking about trades. I'm just trying to build a picture. So I think, okay, before I get, because I don't want to, you see, sometimes what we do is we, we go onto a chart, we stick an RSI on or stochastic, and we say, oh, it's overbought, I should sell it, right? That's what most people do, just something as basic as that. But that doesn't really work. Firstly, you know, with indicators like that, they're lagging. So the indicators like these, these are price related. This is right now. So I need to get, I need to, like you talk about energy, Gav, quite a lot, but I need to understand the energy of this market. Who is participating? I can't see them physically, but I can imagine them. I can feel what's going on. And so I understand it already. Like, look, that this could be something like that now. And I'm now gonna go look for some evidence of that. Does that make sense? Hopefully it makes sense. Um, so now, what have we got? So I've basically gone into the four hour time frame. I've identified that, you know, we've got some some good um, and channel. It, yes, yes. It, sorry, mate. Uh, it froze, it froze then, mate. I think it froze for everyone. It did for me. So, um, okay. Maybe you just what, might bro, want to rewind. Like me? Yeah. I think it was okay. both of us, actually. <clears throat> what? Well, uh, okay. So, so basically, all I was saying there is I'm trying to understand what's happening, who's participating, what is likely to happen next, so that when I go and look for evidence on the lower time frames, it's all in context and it makes sense. So I'm not going to get fooled into it and say, oh, you know, because it's at the RSI is over, overbought, I need to sell it, you know, because that's not going to work. So what I've done here is I've drawn in my uh, trend lines, okay, um, and I've put in my channel lines. And these are, you know, reactive channel lines. And so now I can start to think about possible conclusions. So I've basically taken the, uh, these lines and I've just kind of um, put them in here because they're reacting. And I've plugged in my Fibonacci. Now, this little dashed line, in case you don't know, is basically the prediction of where this cycle is about to complete. Okay, so that comes in, let me just give you that price, at 65.70. I particularly like this. Here's why. Um, I really like the fact that this one here has not yet acted as support. And it fits in really, really nicely with this 50 target. So for me, 65.70 should be marked down as an important zone. And you could use that almost like a short-term buy if you want to. So if this market does this, pushes down, and you have a DTR with a 1618 kind of right in that little zone there with this old resistance becoming support, you've got a high probability of that happening. So for me, short-term, there's a buy there, short-term. Okay, so I would be, especially if you have the DTR there, then you've got the the golden ticket. So 65, 70, and then you can kind of work out where you want to target. You can go for a short-term target. Uh, you can target like this little zone here if you want to, or you can kind of go back up there. Okay, so that's completely up to you. Um, and it depends on your strategy and, uh, you know, what's in your plan. But... What we're trying to identify here is high probability turning points. So I would mark that down and put an alert. Now, if this market went up first and maybe kind of went back to the 618, that's a sell there. 
Okay, why? So that could be a sell that would be around 66.69. For me, is a really nice selling point because firstly, you've got a really nice little level there. Secondly, it could be hitting this um, downward channel. And thirdly, um, as we kind of said before, reminding you that this is in a sell zone on the higher time frame. So all in all, 66.69 looks like a good sell point. Um, and if it did kind of just go up here and went up there, then because this is a um, this is a reversal, it wouldn't surprise me if it then went down and hit the 200 there. So I don't need to know what's going to happen, but I will prepare for both things. And obviously, in a way, this one is slightly higher probability because you've got the higher time frame. You've got the weekly backing you up. This one, you don't. But you've got enough confidence to there to say, look, I'll take the trade. So in this case here, I would personally be looking for something very easy to achieve. So something like um, that. I'd be looking for that. Just quick move, no overnight trades, just take your money and out. And then I would basically say, okay, well, that's cool. I've done that. And then maybe if it does something like that, I'd then sell it, potentially sell it there. And by the way, and this is where strategy is really important. You've got to figure out what you want to do. Somebody might say, well, look, okay, well, going back to this weekly or daily, or whatever, you may want to sell it there. And you may want to target all the way back down to here, right? 65.40, 65.06, which is a, a double daily level, right? 65.40. But I might want to do this. Let me just delete this. I may actually just say, look, I'll sell it there. And I may just take my profit there. Because I don't want to hold it for any swings. I don't want to hold it for any amount of time. I just want to say, look, it's probably going to react there. That's an obvious support because it's reacted here as resistance and support and support. So maybe I'll just take that reaction and go there. Because, you know, otherwise, like, for example, the longer you hold the trade, the more likely that something could happen. So you could sell it there. Right, it's gone there a little bit like the, the trade that you were just speaking about with gold. Um, mm. It goes there, and then you know you're trying to catch it to go all the way down here, and then the market goes there, and you know, and then anything else can happen. Maybe it will break up. You never know. So it's your choice, and you've got to decide what resonates with you. Um, but from my point of view, the general thing is get out, um, ideally, to make it a day trade so that I can lock in my pips and know that's banked and I don't have to wake up to a losing start to my day. So that's what I do now. Um, but you have to decide that part. So all the other bits we can teach. We can show you how to do all of this stuff. You can learn all of this stuff, and, and those that are studying will learn all of this stuff, hopefully, over time. And some of you guys are further along already from what I've seen of what you're posting in the in the groups. But then you've got to decide how you're going to make money. And I think, Gab, you're at that stage as well. You've got to decide what you're going to do to actually make money with the analysis that you're doing, and that's the yeah. next level. Exactly that. So I, I don't know if you want me to have a quick look at one more pair. We have gone over time, or should we save it for next week, or I can post it in the group. Uh, how, you tell quick, me. how quick would a quick look be? Because uh, we can make we can put a five to, five minute time limit to it. You know what? Five ten? Yeah, five minute, five minutes, seven and a half right. minutes. I'm just I'm doing this for you, Katerina, because <laughs> you asked for it, and us I, I, I didn't see it until late. But I'm just I'm going to do it right now fresh, so it shouldn't take me more than a few minutes. 
just, just on that note, I may only do higher time frames but uh, on that note mate sorry to cut you off I, that's my limit i'm out but we're over an hour now so the the cut off starts again <laughs> um my question is have you noticed obviously like now you're doing the in and out um where you're taking less and you're out of the trade your drawdown's not there and you're managing all of that and you're banking the money which is great obviously at one stage you must have been trying to hold on for more pips and longer pips obviously you must not have noticed the difference as a professional trader this must obviously be working a lot better for your mindset but have did you notice like that you're you've banked more money but you're losing more potential pips or was there any of that psychological kind of thing to to kind of navigate around with this strategy no do you know what i um i, I think i've i've I think I've I've kind of explained it to you more than anybody else, but I I'm taking a lot less trades now, but putting a little bit more risk on each trade. So I'm able to make the same or more with less time um, and much more efficiently and less emotional stuff to deal with. Yeah. So I've just been I've just basically accepted that I'm not going to take every every trade um but i'm going to take the very best trades that give me a high percentage win and i'm going to make enough money when i win and i can and i've, I've built my plan now i've adapted my plan to be able to get out when i'm wrong quite quickly because i'm awake as well mm. and that's an important part of my plan so it really allows me to really grow quickly and be out quickly when i'm wrong so I, i'm literally like just cut it it's done it's not right let's look for the next one so yeah so I, i've adapted but you know that's um that really suits me and i think it, you have to find something that suits yourself thanks for sharing that mate no worries um okay so this next pair what's this next pair so this is euro yen so let me let me have a quick look i'm looking at it pretty fresh so i'm just gonna i did just have a let me uh Okay. So just while Andy's doing that, guys, if you're getting value from this, then if you can just bang in some uh, some yeses or some comments into the into the algorithm squad, that'll be most appreciated. Thank you, guys. Hope you're getting uh, lots of value out of the show this week. And you know what, even if we don't find a perfect trade like you've been finding the last few weeks, I think it's really interesting just to see your process right now um, and how you're going about this. Wow. Okay. That's really cool. Um, yeah, that looks like a, a good zone for you, Ian. So you've got this um, nice... So that's a weekly chart, but yeah, that, there's definitely some resistance here. Whether this is, if this breaks this... This could be, you know, it looks quite powerful at the moment, but I would be, you know, in terms of probability, be thinking that for Euro Yen. Uh, bear in mind, guys, I don't, I haven't traded this again for over a year, but, so I'm just looking at it fresh right now. Let me just put in my up fibs. So I'm doing the, I'm doing it as efficiently as I can. So, um, that's really interesting. What level is that? So the, the, the Fibonacci is telling us the completion is there. 127.62. Let me see where that is. That's there. Okay. That's not a bad little level, actually. Look. It's a little bit higher, but 127.62. Yeah, there's a little bit of support there. But can it spike up to there? It's Thursday already, so maybe next week. Does this, and another thing, does this currency tend to spike? Mm, yeah, somewhat. Um, okay, let me go, so it's 127.62. Let me just quickly look at the four hour. Uh, I'd normally spend a slightly bit more time, but I'm just going to do it. You're good, mate. You're good. 
Uh, okay, so we've hit a D there. Interesting. And look at that. Where's that 200 sitting? 128, a bit higher. So, yes, yeah, so you'd, you'd, I guess you'd, I, yeah, I'd probably not trade this this week, but I mean, your Thursday, it's Thursday night, right? So your Friday, I mean, yeah, it's coming off a little bit like the euro dollar, but I would mark this down for next week as a zone where this could be a top. So ideally, Ideally, I mean, this is a four hour chart. What you have is this market doesn't pull back to our 38 mm -hmm. and it actually just does something like this. And once it enters this zone between 127.60 and 128.04, I'd be inclined to, to be looking for a short, which would be anticipating that the weekly time frame could potentially spike up but then hold on this level, which is quite a good level. It's going back quite a bit, resistance support. Yeah, so no trade for now, but I think for next week, I, I'd mark that down as a, as a decent zone. One last thing I could check is just the hourly time frame, just to see what this is saying, but, uh, and, then, and then we'll, okay, that's in the fade zone as well. Tell you what, it's important to know where the 144 is because otherwise this will be invalid. Ooh. Mm. which is slightly lower. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I would, um, I'd keep this in a watch list, but I don't feel confident to trade that right now because I don't have enough, there's not enough confirmation. Things are not lining up as they should. Like I, I normally have the hourly confirming stuff, but this is now telling me something different. Um, like this is, it can't really go above that. Otherwise, this setup gets invalidated and then you're running up to the 200. So I don't want to complicate things for people. But basically, the the best thing is, for me, that, that'll be a watch list one. i put some alerts in and just the picture's not clear enough. Cool. Um, Nick, I, I um, just to answer your question, A sell stop. I'm not a big fan of sell stops. Uh, I prefer getting in at a limit. Why? Um, for fade trades, um, it's really important that you get the right price. So, you know, for, for it to really work, you need to get the right price. So if you go for a sell stop, then you're looking at really you're getting in, I don't know, I, I almost think like you're getting in as a sell stop because you're not confident enough of what your analysis is to say it's going to stop here. Like, and you say, oh, it's almost like you do all this great work, you say it's going to stop here, but let it just go down first and then I'll get in. And then you're sort of saying you're not going to get, you're not going to make enough money from that. Because then you're like probably making a one to one out of a out of finding. So imagine you can do the analysis that we do, and you find the tops consistently, and then you literally don't take them there, and then you you get a one to one out of them. The numbers aren't just going to work. So I would use a limit uh, to make your rewards risk maximum, to make the most amount of money out of the idea. But this one, see, like I don't know. I guess. It's great to give you guys trades, but the best thing that I can give you is the mentality of like, if it does not meet your criteria, just pass on the trade. If it doesn't, if it's not, doesn't feel right, it doesn't resonate. And even if it looks like a good, I think like we did it in the coaching session today, right? When some, you know, we were talking about Euro dollar and I, 
I don't know, it could be my own personal thing because I haven't looked at it for a couple of days because of all the stuff that's been going on. But if it doesn't feel right, if my confidence level is not at least 80%, I don't take the trade. Um, and that's a good way to end this show, by the way. Ask yourself this question. When you're about to take a trade, are you 80% confident that it's a good trade or more? And if you're not, I would advise you not to take the trade. And that opens up a whole, whole other can of worms for, for next week. That's why I guess it's so important that we have a trade plan and we have a blueprint because our 80% confident might be false confidence or we might not have the context that someone like you will. Um, so Sorry, that, yeah, so that trade plan. And, and this is the bit, guys, you can learn trading, but actually how to pull it all together. And I'm point personified of that. This is the bit now. This is where the gold is from this guy is pulling all of this together to actually start making money from it rather than just getting the information. So thank you for sharing your time. Thank you for sharing your energy. Um, and most importantly, thank you for sharing that if a former dinner lady can learn. <laughs> Come on, man. You get, you're going to bring it up again. If a former dinner lady can learn to be a good <laughs> as you are, mate, then it gives all of us hope. So thank you very much for that, guys. It's been amazing. Your show, Pips Like a Pro. We are done for the week. Have an amazing week. I can't believe I'm just doing that sign. It's 1980 again. Woohoo! See you later, guys. Mate, we could do whatever we want. And this is what it's about. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. You know what? When uh, lockdown's finished, mate, you come to London and we'll smash the plates up. <laughs> where's the uh, where's the screen popping up do you know what hold on I'll tell you what we're going to do mate when you have your first 10k month we're gonna, I'm going to make sure you get some plays and you're going to start smashing them in your apartment who's going to do the cleaning I will send you a cleaner <laughs> mate just wear your dinner lady outfit and your little hair net. It'll be <laughs> no, mate, that's not happening. Right, guys, we are done. Thank you very much for watching. Big love. Have an amazing week. We are out. La suin montagna, oh bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 se perire, la suin montagna, sotto l'ombra di un bel fiore.